if you're looking for a fantastic case for your Samsung Galaxy Note 9 that's going to protect it and also it's going to look good, then check this case. The link to this case is going to be down in the description box below. Hey guys, Saki here from Saki Tech and in today's video, I'm going to share some fantastic tips and tricks for your Samsung Galaxy Note 9 that are known as the advanced features. So basically, if you go to the settings of your smartphone, uh, you'll notice that over here it says advanced features and if you go inside, there's a full list of settings here to play with. Now, the one thing I'm not going to cover in this video is the S Pen features on the top because I do have a full video dedicated to the S Pen tutorial. So we actually, in that video, I go from top all the way to the bottom. So I'm going to drop a link to that video in the description box below in case you need it. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to cover all the other tactics here from top to bottom so you guys become an expert of your Samsung Galaxy Note 9. So let's dive right in. Now the very first button here is called the accessories button. So when you connect certain Samsung accessories to your smartphone, you get a bunch of options. Now in this case, the fast wireless charging option is enabled. You can disable this. I don't know why you would do that. Uh, make sure this one is in fact enabled and this gives you fast wireless charging as opposed to the standard speeds that take hours to charge your phone wirelessly. So make sure this is in fact enabled. The next tip here is called the smart stay feature. So this one basically is a very uh, useful trick and it makes sure that your phone stays open as you stare at the phone. So the sensor on the top here knows that you're staring at the phone. So it's going to make sure uh, that the screen remains on as long as you're staring at the screen. It's great if you're reading an article on a website and sometimes as you're reading it, the screen just locks down and then you have to re-log into your phone. Okay, so that's a good feature to have. Now I'm going to skip the games over here for a minute. I'm going to come right back to it. Now let's just talk about the one-handed mode. So one-handed mode has been around for a while and it's an amazing feature. Uh, let's uh, go inside and again, you can enable this and you have a couple options to activate the one-handed mode. And again, one-handed mode is designed so your entire phone can be used with your thumb, okay? So it's a large phone. If you don't have large hands, you're not going to be able to reach every uh, area of the phone using one finger. So you can activate one-handed mode e either using a gesture or a button. Now, I like to use the button mode. So I'm going to go over here. And basically, you tap the home button three times and boom, you get the one-handed mode. On top of having this mode, uh, you can have a small size like this, or this is the smallest you can get. Or if it's too small, uh, you can increase the size a little bit to fit your own finger size. And then from here, uh, you can use this phone as if, it was, uh, as, if, as if this area was the actual active phone. So if I pull down the notifications panel, it comes from down from here, go up from here and anytime I bring up the um, any any kind of uh, let's go over here and if I tap on the keyboard everything is going to be minimized okay so when you're done with the one-handed mode there's a couple ways to exit it uh, but one thing I'm going to show you guys is if you are in fact left-handed this is the way you want it but if you're right-handed you want to right justify the screen you tap on this guy it goes to the right side okay so you can be left or right using that arrow and of course uh, you can go to the settings to play with the settings right over here or you can just tap over here and it goes back to normal. You tap outside the area of the one-handed mode, uh, which is right here. All right, so that's one-handed mode. Let's go back into the advanced features and look at the next tactic. Now, finger sensor gestures are pretty amazing. Basically, you can use the fingerprint sensor to open or close notifications. Okay, so let me just show you exactly what I'm talking about. So here's a fingerprint sensor. If I pull this down, notifications panel comes right down. If I pull it up, it goes right up. Okay, there we go. Absolutely fantastic. Well, let's go right back into the advanced features. Let's go to advanced features and uh, go down a little bit. So we've got the quick launch camera. This is a pretty simple one. If this is enabled, you can double uh, tap the power button anytime from anywhere, even from the lock screen to bring up the camera for a quick shot. So if I double tap this, boom, the camera gets launched. And even if the phone is locked, it's going to happen. So this is great if you're on the go, you see something you like, instead of unlocking your phone with a pin number or your irises or your fingerprint, you just double tap the power button. It bypasses all security and launches the camera and camera only. Then you take a shot and you move on. 
Let's scroll down and then we have the device assistance app. If you tap this guy, uh, this guy basically manages what's going to happen when you press and hold the home button. So in my case, if I press and hold the home button, it brings up the Google Assistant, as you can see. And you can talk to her, get some uh, answers. Uh, but what you can do is you can go back in here and you can actually go here and you can change that to something else. You can actually uh, make sure you can actually use internet, okay? I'm not gonna do that right now. It's gonna mess a lot of settings up, but uh, you can actually change this from Google Assistant to the actual Samsung internet, or you can say none. And if I press and hold this time, nothing happens. So everything here is uh, can be disabled, okay? Now this one is a multi-window options. Now there's a couple options in here that are pretty amazing. Now this one here has to do with multitasking. Now as you know, with multitasking, I can have two windows running side by side. I can have the settings app, for example, uh, and I can have, uh, let's just uh, use the uh, Chrome application. So I have two windows here. So I got two windows and I can actually work on both of these completely independently. So when you enable this option here, use recent buttons, you can actually change the current application from full screen uh, to split screen. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So let me enable this and let me press and hold the recent button and that's gonna allow me to activate uh, split screen multitasking without having to press this button here that I usually press. So I can go back into Chrome and now I got split screen multitasking. Now, if I want to uh, go back into the full screen, I can press and hold the recent button. And what it's going to do, it's going to take the top application and make it full screen. So the bottom application disappears. So press and hold, boom, bottom application is gone. Now, again, normally when I do want to do a multi uh, split screen multitasking, I press these two uh, rectangle buttons and that does the same thing. But with that recent button enabled, if I'm in an app, I can press and hold, that app gets uh, goes to the top and then at the bottom I can pick whatever I want and again if I want to get rid of it boom it's gone alright now let me go back in here there's a couple things in here that you also want to know uh, let's go to multi window you can go in here and you can actually do a snap window instead of the split screen view which is also fine so I can do it this way let me do, uh, go to the settings press and hold boom now I got the snap window so I can snap any portion of this window to the top and then at the bottom I can continue to multitask now that's the size you get with the snap window all right anyway let's go back here advanced features multi window uh, let's um, go back here and keep it at split screen that's the way I like it and then you have the pop-up view action enable this and with this one if you go to the calculator application for example you can do the pop-up view which is this thing right here which is pretty damn amazing uh, you get this pop-up window, you can tap on this, you can minimize it, put it anywhere on the screen, uh, do something else, and then use this on the side as a pop-up window. You can exit out or you can go full screen. Now most Samsung applications are supported uh, for pop-up window. Let's go right back in and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about Smart Capture. So let's go inside. So Smart Capture allows you to uh, modify your screenshot so basically if I take a screenshot using any method on my screen on my phone let's uh, let's go home let's just take a screenshot using this button I took a photo and that's the smart capture it allows me to draw on it uh, it disappears you have to tap on really quickly let me do one more time so that's the smart capture options I can tap on this and I can crop that image and everything and then save it that way so if you disable smart capture that's that's not gonna work so let me go back in disable this now let me take a screenshot just of this screen. It saves this, uh, it, it takes a shot and just saves it. You do not have the options to edit it. So enable this if you want extra options after you capture a screenshot. Next up we have the palm swipe to capture. Now this is a very easy thing to do. Basically you swipe your palm across the screen and it takes a screenshot, okay? So it doesn't work all the time, but it's gonna work. Uh, just try it a couple of times. Once you get a feel for it, it's gonna be very easy. Do exactly as, uh, as, as it's been shown over here, and uh, it's going to take a screenshot, even though you have all these other ways to take screenshot on your smartphone. And then the next thing we have is direct call, one of my favorite features. Uh, when you have this on, if somebody is calling you, you have the option to answer, uh, you, you swipe on the screen to take the call, 
Uh, what you can do with direct call is just bring the phone to your ear and boom, it actually answers the call, okay? So instead of swiping to answer, just pick the phone up, put it to your ear like this picture here, like this uh, animated GIF, and it's gonna take the call. It's gonna answer that call. And then we have the smart alert. Let's say that you, your phone was sitting on the desk and you were away and somebody called you or somebody sent you a text message. When you come back and you just pick up the phone, it's gonna vibrate and it's gonna give you an alert saying that you missed a notification. Could be a message, could be a phone call. It does alert you. Uh, in, in a smart fashion so you can actually look into it and see what's going on. Okay, so again, just a very simple thing, but very useful. Let's go back in and let's go to Easy Mute, another one of my favorite features. Tap on this guy. Uh, somebody's calling you, uh, you wanna just mute the phone. What you can do is you can just put the phone upside down on the screen with the screen facing the table and it's gonna mute that call or that alarm or you just put your finger on top, I mean your hand on top of the screen, and that's going to mute or uh, disable whatever notification that you're getting. Absolutely fantastic tactics. Then you've got the swipe to call or send messages. Now basically if you go to your contacts, let me just go to my contacts over here uh, in my phone. Now you can see that I have a bunch of contacts here. Uh, if I wanna call any one of these guys, I can swipe this way to send a text message or swipe this way to make the call. Okay, so swipe to send a message, swipe to actually uh, make a call on any one of these contacts in my contacts. So that's that feature. You got the dual messenger option. Now this one allows you to run two of these apps. Any available app shows up here. So WhatsApp, Facebook, Messenger. If you have two separate accounts, uh, you can use two separate accounts on two separate WhatsApps. Facebooks or messengers, all right? So one, one could be for uh, personal use and the other one could, could be for uh, business use and you can use this option. And then we have a couple other options here. Uh, we have the video enhancer. Uh, make sure this is always enabled. It's gonna enhance any video. So if you don't have this, uh, the video looks a little bit dull. It still looks amazing on the screen, but with this, it just gets enhanced a little bit more, okay? So make sure this one is enabled. I'm gonna come back to these two in a second. Uh, touch sensitivity. Uh, if you are using a screen protector on your smartphone, make sure the touch sensitivity has been increased uh, so the phone doesn't miss any kind of touch input that you give to the screen. Then we have the send SOS messages. These are stress signals. If I go in here and if I enable this, what I can do is I can, uh, I do have to agree to all these terms after reading it. So agree, uh, cancel that. Okay, whoops, there we go. Okay, so you have to add a recipient uh, before you can enable this option. But after you enable this option, uh, what you can do is you can tap the power button three times quickly to send a stress signal to a uh, person that you choose. Like when I enable this, it's gonna ask me to pick a contact. So you do have to add one emergency contact. After you do that, uh, you can come back here and you can send a message by tapping three times the power key very quickly, okay? So when you tap the power key three times, if you have these two enables, uh, op options enabled, it will actually send an audio recording and a bunch of photos taken from the front and the back to that emergency contact. So that emergency contact has a few clues as to where you are perhaps. So this is great for real emergencies. And then finally, we've got the direct share option. Uh, if you do enable direct share option, uh, this makes it easy to share files with other people that own Samsung devices. So if I go to my gallery, for example, and if I launch a photo, if I tap on share, what it's gonna allow me to do, it, it, it's gonna give me this option, share to device option. When I tap on this, it finds any available uh, devices that accept this kind of input, and I can just tap it, it's gonna send it to that device directly, okay? And you can send large files very easily using this tactic. Let's go back into advanced features over here. And that's basically everything that I wanted to talk about. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of things going on here. Uh, I did say I'm gonna talk about the games mode. So if you go in here, you do have to enable the game launcher. When you enable the game launcher, you have a couple options here. Uh, you can go into your app settings and what the game launcher does is it takes all the uh, games that you have on your phone and groups them under this game launcher that looks really nice. So all the games are here. 
I can tap the game performance mode and I can change the performance uh, to power saving, balanced or performance, meaning uh, the games are gonna look great. I can do a setting for each game if I wanted to. And of course, I've got a bunch of, a bunch of other things. I can discover more games from here uh, and I can actually change the sound of the game. Uh, the game volume will be muted, but your phone volume won't, won't change, stuff like that. Just come and take a look at this, all right? So that is the game launcher under advanced settings. And that brings us to the end of all the advanced features on your Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Guys, thank you for watching this video and make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech for more videos to come and also give this video a thumbs up. And finally, if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, follow me on all at Saki Tech Online. For now, have a fantastic day.